Hello friends, welcome back to the Hindu analysis dated November 16, 2018. So under the front page we have the news with respect to Supreme Court pulls up the states for not recruiting the judges. So this is with respect to the Supreme Court right now has pulled up various state governments and also the administrative side of the high courts where they have been delaying in almost filling the vacancies in the subordinate judicial services. So why we do call it as a delaying part is with respect to there was a five page order which was been given by the Supreme Court with respect to filling the vacancies as there was a post of nearly 22,036 such posts which we've been there which need to be filled up and out of that 5,133 postings were been under the vacancy. So this vacancy is what the Supreme Court wanted to get filled with respect to subordinate judicial services and it has been given an order for the state governments to do the same but still there was no such you know kind of in steps which was being taken but still the vacancy is being still continuing to be the same. On limelight of it now the Chief Justice of India Ranjan Gogai he has taken a sue motor cognizance for this is for more than 5000 vacancies which is into the post of the subordinate judicial post as well as the a penalty which has been touching with respect to pendency of the cases which has been touching to crores which means that uh, there is a vacancy of 5000 cases and there are nearly 3000 crore cases which has been pending before the lower courts but the judges have not been filled where they have to dispose these 3000 cases so based on this is what the shoe motor cognizance which has been taken by the chief justice of india and you should also know that to why is the delay been happening from the state levels so here the source of the problem to what is been talking is with respect to poor infrastructure so this poor infrastructure that is especially the courtrooms or to the residents for the judges was not being arranged properly because of the infrastructure problem and also the lackadaisical approach where they have been conducting the appointment process on time. So this is also with respect to appointment processes which was not being conducted on the time. So as why the delay is happening because purely on the infrastructure conditions because of the poor infrastructures and here the uh, Chief Justice of India Mr. Ranjan Goga you also made a statement we want our judges we will put them in their post but if they're not being able to work that is because of the government where the government has not been giving with the proper infrastructure facilities and he also spoke about the nearly a uh, lot many uh, ca particular cases which has been pending before the lower courts and we need to act it immediately taking this as a need of the hour we have to work at once so this is what is the chief justice of india had to say on the same and especially if we have to talk about one particular you know state alone that is up which is having 42.18 percentage which means that almost like thousand vacancies in up alone which can be seen in bihar it is 37.23 percentage wherein meghalaya it is 59.79 percentages so these were the number of these vacancies which has been recorded in the different places of the states and on the same they were also talking with respect to the lack of infrastructure facilities and also the staff especially in west bengal judicial services as well in up the vacancy were thousand and in terms of the lack of infrastructure you can also see a lot of prevailing numbers in west bengal as well so here the courtrooms and also the residential houses are not being provided for the judges and for the support staff so this question has been asked for the chief secretary to why is the government not been able to provide with the courtrooms and also the residential houses this is another question to what it has been put forth by the chief justice so chief justice wants to know about to why is this particular delay been happening what are the main reasons and why is the state government not taking any of the proper stand on the same so here they're also on limelight of it here the up government had said that they would be providing an adequate housing arrangements for the judicial officers as soon as possible and when we have to talk about delhi it is around like 100 vacancies which were over 200 vacancies so it's about the case of delhi and uh, three crores as what we discussed the cases which has been pending in the lower courts so this is what it has to be acted right now and based on this the supreme court is now pulling the states for recruiting the judges so now the uk the next news item the uk faces a new crisis over brexit so this is with respect to the brexit where we know that there is a couple of and uh, continuous news is on the same which has been coming as it is due on march 29th so now there is a doubt in the deal whether it might be concluded or not because here there are a lot many ministers that is several ministers are getting resigned 
which means that they are giving their resignations which has been including the brexit secretary dominic rapp and he is also pushing for a no conference motion against the prime minister theresa may where it has been triggered as a new political crisis so now the deal is going to get end or they're drafting the deal to get it on a brexit but there are several ministers who are making their resignation now and they're also putting a no conference motion on theresa may so this particular situation which has been happening right now it has been actually thrashing and their deal might be in doubt as several ministers are quitting from the post so this is about it and she has been pointing that uh, centrality of a deal for keeping in britain's manufacturing sector that is with associated jobs the she wants to keep it alive and also avoiding the hard border in northern ireland and any of free movement is what her concern is and she also estimates the statement that uh, right decision is what the leader has to take but not the easiest ones and she welcomes to whatever she's been facing right now with the situations with brexit so this is about it and this news is currently under development and you'll be getting lot many same such news as which would be there so try to take only those important lines which is important for us and other things can be easily omitted on so this is about it the next under the east odisha announces drought relief package for nine districts that is with respect to the odisha government which is announcing a drought relief package so why they are announcing this draft drought relief package is with respect to the uh, nine districts which have been under a severe drought so especially they are having an acres of 233173.8 acres of cropland where it has been associated with 5633 villages and those nine districts are these nine districts which have been sustaining with a crop loss of 33 percentage and above so this is a current situation in odisha and based on that now the odisha government is announcing that they would be coming up with a in sense they have announced with a drought relief packages for these nine districts so in the drought relief packages the farmers who have been suffering with 33 percentage and above crop loss in nine districts so here this packages would be coming in heed for those farmers who are being suffering 33 percentage and above and also they would be getting up with the agriculture input subsidy where they would be provided to small and the farm marginal farmers so this is especially as we discussed for the crop loss of 33 percentage and above and this is at the rate of 6800 which is for per acres of the rainfed areas but in irrigated areas per acre they would be getting 13500 and in perennial crop they would be getting per acre 18000 so this is what it has been based on the acre wise is how much of the amount they would be getting in terms of the input subsidies so this is about the farmers who would be getting uh, uh, you know sustained crop losses of more than 33 percentage and above and this particular move to what the government has done it is a 100% remission so this is with respect to the cess of the land revenue and also the compulsory water rate of the affected farmers so this is what they'll be doing and another important aspect is the conversion of long term to the short term loans so here the long term kharif loans in the affected areas during the kharif 28 having a crop loss so if that crop loss is more than 33 percentage and above then they would be converted into a medium term loan so and apart from that the other odisha government is also trying to request the center where they wanted them to provide with a subsidy of 3% for the medium term loans so this is with respect to crop loans for prompting with the paying farmers so that's on what the request the odisha government is going to put forward before the center and the tuition fees and also the examination fees with respect to the government and also aided schools and also the colleges they would be getting waived off as they have been uh, declared to be as in drought affected areas so to whatever the other extraordinary fees as to what they have to pay it would be waived off so this is one of the very important kind of an relief packages toward the odisha government as announced for those nine districts which has been suffering the crop losses with respect to 33 percentages and above so this is about the news and under page 3 we have no prominent news except one such thing which is there under your page 4 So on the page five, you have one thing, uh, that is with respect to now a tower for a mother, Kaveri. So we know that uh, 
the unity of the statue of unity on limelight of 182 meters of sardar wallabai patel statue was been unveiled on the narmada river so right now there's one such tower which has been planned by the congress led uh, jds government in karnataka where they're planning to come up with a tower it's not a statue rather it's a tower where they would be coming up with a flowing of the water where they're trying to get a gallery view for the tourist in return so after the statue there's another thing which is coming from karnataka to be as a tower so that's it and here you have visyanagaram wells under drought so this with respect to the visyanagaram where they're continuously seeing a dry spell it's a prolonged dry spell and this is one of the most backward areas of the entire country and now the situation in this particular nagram is getting worse because the coverage of the rainfall is been becoming very lesser and if you see the rainfall coverage with respect to june 1st to november 10th it was as less as 608 mm but on a normal normal basis they used to get around 908 mm but right now it has been very lesser so there is a continued situation and almost tanks and also with the tatipudi reserve also which has been completely dried up and this is what the people used to depend so this was a dependable source and for the first time in the 30 years even these particular tanks and the tatipudi reservoirs is also been getting dried up so on limelight of this people are not been aware to what they have to do and the migration is also getting increased to a larger extent where the farmers and the laborers have been migrated from this affected areas and they're moving on to different places so now taking this situation into consideration the government should declare the entire district to be called as a drought it and also they wanted it to be announced at a 30000 compensation on acre right with respect to the input subsidy so here they wanted to ensure that the government declares this area and also take care to what they have to do if suppose these government are not been taking any of the concerned measures to control with the drought prone areas then that would definitely lead to a socio economic problem especially where the school going children would be affected in a larger extent as there would be a lot of migrations school dropouts also would be accounted in a larger number and if you see to the worst affected one the crop is with respect to paddy and the crop drying up with almost like 80000 acres and there is also maize and sugarcane which has also been affected in this particular regions so this has to be taken under concern right now so that's about it and on the page 6 you have jammu and kashmir to construct 20000 flats for cops on self financing basis so this with respect to jammu and kashmir where uh, the governor who is heading the administrative council he has been approved the proposal which has been submitted by the state home department where they wanted to construct a 20000 flats and this constructions of the 20000 flats would be based on the self financing basis of police personnel so your 10000 flats would be constructed on kashmir and 10000 flats would be constructed on the jammu divisions so when it comes to the land availability as and when they get the land availability the on the places they would start constructing so the main objective to even give such an approval for such kind of a flat construction was with respect to making to create an affordable housing and at the same time there was an extremely limited housing facilities to the jammu and kashmir police personnel so when compared to the other areas jammu and kashmir police personnel were not having any of the proper housing facilities to just to ensure this housing facilities is what the governor who is heading the administrative council satyapal malik he has come up with this an approval where they would be sanctioned and been approved to construct the flats for these particular people so it might be 1 bhk 2 bhk 4 bhk based on to what it's to be done on different personals also they would be accommodated in these particular flats and another important reasons to why they have made such a huge decision is because of the uh, jammu and kashmir's uh, policemen they have been frequently abducted and they have been killed so either by the militants and other people so even to ensure the safeguard and also the security of the personnel it is a need of the art what they have to do and also ensure their security where there won't be any kind of an abductions and also killing of the police personnel so this was why the decision was been taken to construct an approval for the same is also been given for the construction of 20000 flats so then the page 10 we have with respect to pm favors the inclusive indo specific region so this was with respect to the east asia summit which was been conveyed and this was been under the singapore summit so this particular summit had taken place there so on limelight of it now india stand is that india says that it has been committed to the peaceful and also the 
prosperous Indo-Pacific region. So here Mr. Modi also called for enhancing a multilateral cooperation, economic and cultural ties among the member nations at the 13th East Asia Summit which was being held in Singapore. And you should know to when the East Asia Summit was started. So this was inspected in 2005 and India has also been participating since 2005. But we have to specify about Mr. Modi. Modi's it is the 5th East Asia Summit. So but this summit was being started in 2005. So the main thing and um, these were the other uh, thoughts to what Mr. Modi has been tweeted. You have it out here the same issue. And you should know about the East Asia Summit. So it is actually consisting of 10 Asian nations. So they are actually Indonesia, Thailand, Singapore, Malaysia, Philippines, Vietnam, Myanmar, Cambodia, Brunei and Laos. And apart from these 10, Australia, China, India, Japan, New Zealand, South Korea, Russia and USA, they are participators. So they are these particular nations, they are participating to the East Asia Summit, but the 10 Asian members are the one which consist of the East Asia Summit. So these people are on limelight of it is what Mr. Modi also had been there for the summit which was held in Singapore and he was also visioning about the peaceful open and around so an inclusive Indo-Pacific region where they want to strengthen the maritime cooperation and also commitment to a balanced regional comprehensive economic partnership pact. So they're also looking on for a most uh, strengthening of the maritime cooperation and also committed to have a balanced regional cooperative, comprehensive economic partnership. So this is about to what had happened in the East-South Summit, which means they're looking out for a peace and a prosperous in a specific region. So that's it. And down here you have this news. There can't be a ban on the use of the word Dalit in media, PCI. So here the press. Council of India had given a statement and it said that it cannot be a complete ban on the use of the word Dalit so because uh, you should know that the Press Council of India is the one which regulates the print media. So on this particular issue with respect to it, why it even had to give the statement that it cannot be a complete ban because here the Bombay High Court on June 6th it had given an order that the uh, word Dalit may not be used. So why they have taken this decision on the limelight of the IB that is the Information and Broadcasting Ministry that actually issued an advisory to all media outlets to not to use the term or a word called Dalit because the term is actually referring to belonging to the scheduled caste people. So on limelight of this on the Bombay High Court they have also given on the a statement to not to use the word Dalit and it was not only the information and broadcasting ministry but also ministry of social justice they had also issued a similar advisory where they had given a restriction that they should not use the term called Dalits. So on limelight of this is what the uh, press council of India had to give a statement that it cannot be a complete ban on use of the word called Dalit. So this is what the statement they have been exchange of talks happening. So that's it. So if you are not knowing the issue earlier, this particular article will help you to know that there was one, one such important news which was been prevailing on. That's it. And on page 11, we have no such prominent news. On the page 12, you have the same repetitions with the Brexit. So if you want, you can just look on to it. And this is with the Chows in the House House, Rajapaksha refuses to endorse the word. So we know that uh, the Sri Lankan parliament is having a problematic situations right now with respect to dissolutions of the parliament and other things. So based on that now the group of Sri Lankan lawmakers have resorted to an assault on the speaker. So the speaker has been, uh, been assaulted by the Sri Lankan lawmakers and this is uh, designated to be as in Chows as president, uh, former president Rajapaksha as sought for a snap elections. So based on this, the situation is getting more worse. So this is like unrest situations out there. And this news is with respect to death penalty sought for five in Khashoggi case. So we know that the journalist Khashoggi was being murdered on limelight of it. Now the Saudi, Saudi Arabia has given a death penalty for uh, those five accused for murdering the journalist. And in, that was inside the kingdom's Istanbul but they have been absolved with the crown prince of any blame. So the crown prince has not been blamed and this particular Khashoggi was drugged and his body was dismembered. So at the Istanbul uh, consulate, so based on that the five people have been called as an accused and they have been given with a sentence to death. So that is about it.
And the next news item is with respect to India and China agree to expand military ties. So this is with respect to India and China. They have now come up to expand their military ties. And this is with respect to the Wuhan informal summit. So there's a spirit of the Wuhan where this is purely between India and China, which is going to happen in the month of April. Much earlier also they had given in the month, same year. Just talking about the Wuhan. So there's a spirit of Wuhan's informal summit. So here the talks were purely on the another layer of exchange where they wanted between the military personnel of the two countries. So something else they are trying to decide on. They have agreed on to add another layer of the ex exchanges. And the Wuhan summit for the first time, the cadets from the Indian Chinese military academies will also be will also get into the mid-level officers will meet each other very regular basis so here whenever india and china they will not have a proper you know regular touch with one another on this particular limelight now the cadets from the indian and also with the chinese military academics they would be having a regular exchange of meet and exchange of talks as well and they're also looking out for a military exchanges between the personnel at all levels in the aftermath of the wuhan summit so once the Wuhan summit has been done and aftermath of it, they wanted to expand the military services with respect to different levels of the personnel who have been engaged in the military part. And during this particular dialogue, there was also a decision which was been taken where they wanted to add a new conference building measures. And this new conference building measures is actually to maintain a peace and the tranquility on the borders. So you should know that the Doklam issue was a one such biggest issue which was been there. And this is with respect to Wuhan informal summit also they wanted to ensure a conference building measure would be taken so that the peace and also the maintenance and tranquility would be done on the borders to a larger extent so that the issues like Doklam might not be arising in the near future. And the specific additional conference building measures at the operational level they were also being included as to be as an importance for maintaining the peace and the tranquility in India and China border areas. So apart from that, they are also looking out for a conference building measures in terms of the operational level as well. So that to whatever they have to maintain as a peace and tranquility, they would be still able to be maintained with respect to the disputed border areas in between India and China. So this is about it, which means that the cadets and the mid-level officers from both the sides, they would be meeting on a regular basis and the dialogue would be also coming up with a conference building and to ensure with the maintenance of the peace and the tranquility and at the same time to build a conference in terms of the operational level. So this is on the part of informal Wuhan summit. So this is about it. So under the business column you have the government RBI standoff not good situation. So this is with respect to the RBI board member Mr. Gurumurthy he had to give a statement to what has been happening with respect to uh, RBI and there is a lot of tensions which has been uh, you know rift between the finance minister and also the RBI. So which has been happening this is purely on the limelight of the central bank E and also with respect to that is the capital framework and the ease of lending norms for the NBFC sectors on limelight of it he's saying that whatever has been happening right now is not good and it is not prevailing to be as a good situation as well and at the same time he also spoke about the tensions between the rbi and also the government on the section 7 so where they would be empowering the government to issue the directions to the rbi governor but any which ways now the rbi's board meet has been pending on november 19 so that you get more such informations on that and uh, the main important areas to what Mr. Guru Murthy had spoken is with respect to tight provision norms for the bad loans is one go as created problem for the banking system. So tight provision is the one which is actually creating a problem with the banking system and India should not go behind a basal norms for capital adequacy and he spoke about this as well and credit to MSME should be enhanced. So these were the main talks to what he has been spoken in this particular article. So. This is purely his, his observations. And here you have the next news item with respect to the report card which has been coming from Fitch. So it is a Fitch retains rating for India at triple B. So it is actually the you know kind of a rating which would be done by the Fitch. So here it has rated India to be under the triple B, the lowest investment grade rating and it has also been maintaining 
So when comparatively India has been maintaining with the stable outlook with respect to it and it has been still there under the position of the triple B itself. So there's actually the grading in terms of the investments and here the company was also showcasing with respect to the economy would shrug off any lingering effects of demonetization and GST during 2018 and 19 and 2019 and 20. So this is what the observation from the Fitch had to give on to the GST and the demonetization and India's rating balance a strong medium term growth where the outlook and also the favorable external balances with the weak financial finances and there is also a lagging in structural factors. So this is actually getting into a governance standards and they are also getting a bit of difficult but definitely there would be an improvement in terms of the businesses. So there's a lot of balances is what India has been rating on. It has been able to have a good balance on the strong medium term growth and also it is a favorable external balances which has also been shown on the weak fiscal part. So the situations have been difficult but still the businesses which has been improved out here and the agency was been favoring on the economic growth outlook which has been supported India's credit profile. So if you see the real GDP growth that actually fell to 6.6 percentage in the financial year 17-18 but the Fitch was actually forecasting to India in the financial year 19 to be a 7.3 and in financial year 20 to be a 7.5. So this is purely the forecast of the Fitch what it sees India to be in the near future but right now it has the GDP has been fallen to 6.6 percentage with the year of 2017 and 18 and this particular uh, 17 and 18 6.6 .6 was a temporary drag this was because of the demonetization and the GST and they believe that they would gradually get faded off. So then it will be able to move on for our next level where India would be performing well and they also made a statement uh, though it is actually dipping the GDP of the country with 6.6 .6, but still GST is something a very important reform to what had India had been done and it is also likely to support to the growth of the medium term once teething issue has been dissipated. So this would also be in focusing on the midterms as well. So here in the medium term it will be uh, performing far better and India's 5 year average real GDP growth of 7.1 percentage is the highest in the APAC region and it has also been uh, among the BBB range peers. So when we have to compare it with the, the triple B range uh, among with the other uh, con companies or the countries sorry countries which has been rated. So on that India has been nearly doing good in terms of being an average GDP holder with 7.1 percentage when compared to the other peers and they also recent analysis they also spoke is with respect to uh, India had an highest medium term growth potential among the largest emerging markets. So the medium term growth potential was more in terms of the India when compared to the largest emerging market so that was also one important aspect where it is also allowing India to retain to be as a substantial or remain to be high in terms of the period of time so it has been able to maintain it on a proper aspects. So solid policy record is with respect to RBI so it had also given a statement on the RBI where it is actually building a solid monetary policy record. So the CPI has been within the target range so you know that the consumer price inflation has been the uh, within the target range of 4% which means that plus or minus has been welcomed and this was been maintained purely after the inspection of the MPC that's a monetary policy committee which was been set up in the year 2016 that was in October. So after this has been set up actually the CPI has been maintained well. So this was one of the record to what the RBI had done. So we know that the tensions which has been increasing between uh, finance minister and the RBI but this particular move from the RBI what has been doing it's also getting an appreciation from the Fitch and the Fitch is also expecting the inflation average to be close to 4.9 percent in the financial year 9 because they also predict to be doubling on the BBB range Maidan to be as 2.5 percentage of 2018 and here the agency is also expecting that the RBI should try start rising the repo rate policy from the next year because currently it is trying to hold only like 6 percentage but here the agency is trying to give an uh, you know expectations or telling the RBI to raise it uh, more than 6 percentage of the policy repo rate from next year so that uh, the growth gains further tractions can be done on the same 
and the policy that is a monetary tightening could also be brought forward in case of the recent government policies especially with the MSP where they have been hiking for the agriculture goods on the inflation expectations. So here the monetary tightening can also be brought as we discussed is with respect to MSP hike where the government has been doing and coming up with various such policies where for the agriculture goods where they are actually pushing up the inflation expectations. So this is about it and these uh, part of the uh, you know newspapers becomes very important as UPSC are asking more such questions on the reports and also the analysis to how India has been ranked from the other countries. So on limelight of this, this particular article becomes very important on the economics perspective and never to miss this particular part and try to get more information on the Fitch and also see your previous year question papers to how the questions was been asked in your preliminary examination as this is a very good heel for your UPSC prelims part. And here the next news item we have is trade deficit rises to dollar 17.13 billion. So this is with respect to the trade deficit. So India's merchandise trade deficit has actually been widened with a dollar of 17.13 billion which is actually due uh, to the part of the higher oil import bill which has been happening back in. So due to the higher uh, oil import now the India's merchandise trade has actually widened with dollar 17.13 billion so this was a uh, data which was been released by the official. So the trade data deficit is wider than the 14.61 billion as this was being seen last year in 2017 and the month of October but in 2018 if you have to compare it with the September month it was 13.98 billion. So within a year in September too if you see in the month of October there is a, a huge amount of percentage which has been uh, you know you can find it to be as a deficit so this is a situation and this is purely with respect to a higher oil importing part but there's also positive growth which can be seen with the same part is that the export in the month of october 2018 were 26.98 billion as compared to the october of 2017 so last year it was 22.89 billion but now it is 26.98 billion as the export has been performed well so this is actually a positive growth which has been executing with 17.86 percentage and uh, this is almost registering a growth of 33.35 percentage as well with respect to the terms of crores to what is being seen as a difference in rupee terms and this was in dollar terms and uh, the commodities which actually saw a huge and a very strong growth in terms of exports they are engineering goods with 8.83 percentage petroleum products with 49.38 percentage, germs and jewelry with 5.48 percentage, organic and inorganic chemicals with 34.01 percentage, drugs and pharmaceuticals with 12.83 percentage. So these were the most important commodities which actually been a very good you know uh, area where the export growth which has been increased in a larger extent. And the imports in the month of October, so this was about the exports in terms of imports in the month of October. They were like 44.11 billion dollars so which is almost like in terms of three crores and change which uh, actually saw highest in terms of dollar is 17.62 percentage and in terms of indian rupees this particular imports was higher as compared to 33.07 percentage so this is about the importing as more of import has been happening comparatively if you see export is 26.98 but import is 44.11 billions so you can see what is the difference between the exports and imports as well. And the oil imports in October 2018, they have seen almost like 14.21 billion. And this is higher in terms of dollars, like it is marking like 52.64 percentage. And last year it was 30.2 percentage, but right now it is 52.64. As a lot of depreci rupee depreciation has been happening and the oil prices, which has also been increasing in a faster space. So due to all those things, this is what is the changes which has been happening on the export and import of the products. And this is about it and you also know that the OPEC meeting which is going to happen on the December first week. So there they would be actually deciding on the oil prices. So if they do that, uh, the things would be sounding better is what most of the economists have been looking out for. So even this article becomes very important on perspective of a UPSC on the business column. So don't afford to miss this. The next news item, Binani Cement Dalmia Bharat moves the Supreme Court against the NCLT order. So we know that yesterday the NCLT had given a permission for the Ultratech Cement where 
it had given a revising bid in sense a resolution bid of almost like 7950 and we know that rajputana also lost it on the bidding so now it is the dalmia bharat group they actually moved on to the supreme court where they are challenging the order which was been given by the national company law appellate tribunal so because they have approved it for the ultratech on the same thing now the dalmia bharat had gone out so this is actually the mahendra singh so he is the md and the ceo so he is the one who has moved with respect to filing with the rbi i'm sorry the supreme court and uh, this particular thing was not for the first time he had moved it earlier also he had been uh, challenging with respect to the supreme court as the coc decisions with the ultratech because as they accepted with a revised proposal uh, this was something on a detrimental and they wanted to get sorted and the issue has been gone to the supreme court so this is about it so this is okay again there's a news which is in transition and you will not have anything as a prominency but on my perspective you should get more in touch with the nclat orders so what is nclat what is it what is ibc and all those things you should know and you should know on the coc the committee of creditors so these becomes very important on the exams perspective who went to where and what is the case they filed those things won't be prominent for us rather these uh, you know tribunals and the coc committees these becomes important so know about them the life we have a uh, important one super earth found orbiting the sun's nearest single star so here the super earth star is nothing but the barnard star so it's barnard star b so this is the second closest known explo planet to the sun and uh, the closest one is actually the proxima b so this is just lie, lying with respect to four light years from the earth and this has been orbiting around the red dwarf proxima centauria so here the researchers have actually found this particular star and astronomers have discovered this frozen planet with a mass which is three times more than the earth and this is orbiting very close to the solitary star of the sun and this is particular and this particular planet is a rocky planet and it has been called as an barnard star b and this has been uh, orbiting around the host star and this takes at least like 233 days to have a revolution path there and the uh, particular you know uh, the researchers or the astronomers who were there found it they said that the planet planet is actually lies at the distant region from the star which is known as the snow line and this is also behind the habitable zones where the liquid water has been available and also there might be a possibility of the life which could be sustaining on the same but we have to know about the temperature the surface temperature of the planets this is to be around like minus 70 degree celsius and they're also talking like the substantial atmosphere of the temperature could also be higher if it contains more hospitable so this might also become higher if it is like maintaining to be substantially atmosphere but right now to what they have recorded is minus 70 degree celsius and uh, this particular barnard star b is actually an infamous object among the astronomers and also exoplanet scientists because this is one of the first stars which were actually been planets which were initially claimed but later proven to be incorrect earlier they were used to be claimed to be as a planet but earlier it was incorrect but right now they again come back to a situation where at nearly 6 light years away the barnard star is a next closest star to the sun so this is after the alpha centauria triple system and this is very next to it and this is a type of the fiat that's a low mass star which is called as a red dwarf and this particular red dwarfs are those which are best places to look for exoplanet candidates so this is one of the planets which is outside our solar system right uh, so that's all about this particular super earth which has been uh, seen and this is almost the second closest known exoplanet to the sun and we discussed earlier the proxima b is the one which has been very closer to the sun and it has a light year of four light years but uh, wherein uh, barnard star is with respect to six light years so the researchers they also finding on the radial velocity method by they using the observations that had led to the discovery of the barnard star b so how even the researchers got to know is because they used a methodology or a kind of an observations which is to be called as an a radial velocity method where they observed that and they discovered that there is an existence of the barnard star b so this technique would actually help them to detect the, detect the wobbles in the star which are likely to be caused by the gravitational pull of an orbiting planet 
so whenever the obel affect the light which is been coming from the star they will be able to figure out and that's when the observation made it clear that there is a super earth which is very closest to the sun it's a frozen planet so that's all about this so this becomes important on perspective of a science and technology science column and the next news item ice age crater discovered beneath greenland glacier so this with respect to a uh, greenland glaciers beneath it there was an uh, ice age crater which was been discovered so this was first actually discovered in the july 2015 itself by the researchers and they inspected to come up with a map of the topographies which has been beneath the greenhouse greenland's ice sheet and they had come up with this previous enormous detected circular depression but they were this was purely under the hiawatha glacier so immediately they came with a special path and same time it was been clear that it is difficult to confirm to what is the origin of this particular depression but right now they are coming up with those kind of an informations where the buried beneath a kilometer of the snow and the ice in the northern greenland and the scientists scientists have un covered an asteroid impact crater which is bigger than the area of paris so this particular crater is 20 uh, crater which was been formed was with respect to um, astro meteorite which had actually crashed in which was like 20 tons so this is the first time that the crater of any size which was been found under one of the earth's continental ice sheets so the first time this makes a recording you know kind of in findings where for the first time they have seen a crater which has been underneath the earth's continental ice sheets and this is one of the important part and this particular researchers they have taken almost like 3 years to come and get a conclusion and clear image on that and this particular crater they also mentioned that it is measuring 31 kilometers as a diameter so they are also assuming that it is bigger than the paris space as well and uh, it is 25 largest impact craters on the earth so it has been placing among all the 25 craters and this particular informations was been study which was been published by the journal science advance so they were also been informing about the kilometer wide iron meteorite which had actually smashed into the northern greenland so this uh, meteorite is the one which had created a crater which was under i know beneath buried with respect to the snow melt of the 31 kilometers radius under the greenlands so these are the main important things to what has been found and there are certain uh, crater exceptions exceptionally they are well preserved and they have been surprising because here the glacier seat is an incredible efficient erosion agent that has actually been quickly removed from the traces of the impact as well so they they also saying that this has not been possible to date the crater directly and they were not been able to find out to where they belong to and what is it and by this condition strongly the situation to what it is is strongly conditioning and suggesting that this was actually been formed after the ice began to cover the greenland so this is as good as younger as 3 million years old and this is uh, possibly having an age old of 12000 years and this at marked towards the end of the last ice age as part so ice last ice age was also with respect to it and uh, the 20 ton iron meteorite sits in the country yard or at the geological museum in copenhagen to whatever the crater which came and hit the greenland so now that 20 ton meteorite has been placed in the museum in the copenhagens so now it has they've spent almost like 3 years to get the informations on that and now they have been confirming with the diameter how many you know light years old they are and what are the informations on that it has been discussed out here so the discovery of an ice age crater has been done with respect to a science advance which has confirmed it so this is about it and that's it you don't have any other prominent news pertaining to the upsc exams and uh, these were the important news items dated november 16 2018 thank you